Good morning, everyone. Uh, we have just hit 11 a.m., so we are going to get started with today's uh, investor briefing while a few more people are logging on. Uh, my name is Alfred. I'm part of the investor relations team at Novartis. We'll be assisting with running today's investor call. Um, we're joined today by Novartis CEO Mark Healy, who will provide an update on Novartis' uh, activities through the March quarter uh, and progress on the business transformation that started nine months ago. Uh, with each quarter since, nobody has progressed through each stage of the transformation uh, where Mark will be able to provide uh, more detail and answer any questions you might have for him. Uh, if you would like to submit any questions for Mark, please type them into your Q&A box uh, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, it's the one marked with a little speech bubble. Um, it is a very busy day on the ASX today with plenty happening around March quarterlies, so I won't take up any more of Mark's time. Mark, let me hand over control to you. Thank you, Alfred. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the March quarter update. As Alfred mentioned, this is now my third quarter as CEO. Uh, for those following us closely, we're now deep into a significant transformation at Novati, which is very structured, uh, is well underway, uh, and pleasingly showing early uh, but strong results, which I will talk to today. For those new to the company, and as a quick refresh on what we do, Novati enables businesses to both pay and be paid. Now, this is a really simple but really important statement of position and difference to other payments businesses. The payments industry has many service providers, but Novati is different through the two-sided nature of our proposition. We are B2B focused and have a product set that supports a business or another fintech to both make payments and to accept payments. To do that, we can provide an end-to-end -end value chain covering acceptance, processing, settlement, cross-border payments, uh, Forex services, a range of bill payments, a range of card issuing programs, plus a range of alternative payment options around wallets, pins, vouchers, and newer forms of payment, including our stablecoin. In doing so, I believe we are a unique payments business in Australia. To my knowledge, there is not a comparable payments company with a similar set of capabilities. Our challenge is to now bring this payments offering together across process, product and platform in a far more seamless way than it is now. Payments is a crowded and noisy marketplace. The language, the technology, and the choices can be confusing, even overwhelming for business owners. Our value proposition is the simplicity and the completeness of an end-to-end -end offering and through a single relationship. The key opportunity for Novati is that given the breadth of our offering, we are extremely well-placed to benefit from the future long tail of digital transformation needs in the SME sector. Our strategy was reset when I took the role at the start of the financial year. It has three simple and overlapping elements. The first is to simplify and streamline the company into a focused payments business. Previously, it was a fragmented grouping of effectively independent business units operating their own business stack. The second element is a shift from what I've characterized as a sales-led product-focused mindset and mode of operating into a market-led, customer-focused business. Previously, each payments business unit went to market directly without overlapping direction, without a cross-selling culture or integrated approach. And the third element is a pivot away from a historic and singular focus on revenue and revenue growth to a profitability focus and to reposition the company's governance and operations towards operating prof profitability as the key milestone. The business is now hyper-focused on payments at our core. We are positioning in market around the value proposition of our end-to-end -end payment solutions I just mentioned. And the whole business is focused on lifting margins and operational efficiency to support the drive to positive operating cash flow. So a new strategy required new ideas and new payments leadership. The core leadership team is completely different from 12 months ago. From a commercial perspective, I've brought Beth, 
Jason and Stephen into the company in the last six months. And they each bring new ideas, experience and perspective to product sales and marketing. Each of them has prior payments domain experience across a range of very successful businesses, both in Australia and internationally, including well-known companies and brands like PayPal, Afterpay, TravelX and Lloyds Bank. I have great confidence in this team. It's a team that knows, that knows what good looks like and how to set up and run a successful payments business. In particular, Jason and I have worked together several times, including building out a very successful local payments company and have each worked in a turnaround capacity, which is directly relevant to the job at hand at Novati. Each of these key leaders fill, fill a key role. They've been in place for circa six months now. They're bedded in and are driving us forward to produce the performance changes in core payments that we are starting to see already across the business. The team has been methodically implementing the new strategy over the last three quarters. And just in summary, <clears throat> in Q1, we completed an internal restructure to break down the prior business unit silos, especially in the core payments division. We aggregated into functional teams. We streamlined the sales process and we realigned sales targets and our sales culture around gross mar margin as a primary sales target. In Q2, we restructured our debt financing facility to remove the restrictions on the portfolio. And importantly, we commenced the strategic review of all parts of the group against our midterm strategic and financial goals. That process is ongoing and the entities, products and activities that sit outside of our future core focus, we will streamline or divest at an appropriate time. In Q3, we designed and implemented a major cost reduction program. And we will start to see the financial benefits of this flow into the PL through Q4. And in the next quarter, there'll be an extended focus on both cost and revenue measures necessary to achieve positive cash flow. So, what does that transformation look like? How are we going about it? I'd like to take a minute just to step through and down into some of the specific actions we've deployed. The business portfolio has been reorganized around four clear operating divisions, separating payments, software, and our investment divisions. I've got a slide that demonstrates this next in great detail. We are deep into simplifying the business with payments now at our core. We're continually simplifying both our internal processes, but also externally attempting to make it easier and simpler for customers to do business with us. The shift to a market-led customer focus is driving how we go to market. We're very, very clear now on the initial target markets and our target customer types, and we've streamlined access to multiple products and have an active cross-selling campaign underway. We're also starting work on repositioning the brand around the value proposition of our integrated fusion-based payment solutions. Our historic financial performance is a byproduct of the way the company had been set up and operated. In the past, we have successfully found pathways to new ideas and new revenue streams, but margins are not where they need to be. We now have a whole business approach to lifting margin and have set very clear 70% plus midterm targets for all of our teams. In Q3, we implemented a $4 million annual cost reduction program that will start to deliver results flowing through into the PL in Q4, starting from the month of April. The largest component of costs in the business are our staff. And so as part of this program, we had a 12% reduction in our workforce across Q3. Very importantly here, we also made a decision that for initiatives sitting in our investments pillar, such as the AUDD stablecoin and the bank, these businesses must be self-funded in future without ongoing support from Novati for further capital or capital raisings. We also started to see customer and contract wins flow through from new and extending customers. 
Some recent examples include new processing partnerships for a financial services business, and also one of Australia's largest food delivery platforms, a new card program for a major accounting platform in New Zealand, and contract extension with a major buy now, pay later provider. Moving into Q4, we will deepen and extend the actions around revenue, margin and cost to drive towards positive operating cash flow. This includes focused marketing campaigns and driving new sales at higher margins, alongside continuing to work on expenses as we realise the efficiencies from the closer integration of people, processes and platforms within the payments division. I just mentioned the portfolio realignment and our four operating divisions. We're now organised, reorganised into four pillars. Payments Australia New Zealand, Payments International, Technology Solutions, which has our billing solutions and other legacy software sales, and our investments group. Looking ahead, our core focus will be on the Payments ANZ division. You can see here, this is the area of accelerating performance and the growth vector for the company. Payments ANZ is growing in both absolute and relative terms and will become the future prime mover of the company. We expect it to become the largest area by both revenue and contribution in the near midterm. Already, you can see the 75% revenue growth from this pillar in calendar year 23 versus calendar year 22 shows it's well ahead of any other part of the business and this will only enhance over time as we focus our marketing, our roadmap and our customer efforts in this area. The simplification strategy involves a streamlining of the group and the strategic review has highlighted areas for both optimization and divestment from other pillars over time. And this process is underway in some cases already. We believe the new strategy, the initiatives underway and the continued performance enhancement will begin to un unlock value from within the group. And there is ample opportunity for this value to be recognized in future share price movements. Pleasingly, we're also seeing the methodical approach and the transformation drive enhance performance into the business. And we're now starting to see increasing growth of a lower cost base. Since the transformation commenced in Q1 of FY24, quarterly revenue is up 21% and quarterly expenses are down by 23%. In Q3 itself, revenue grew strongly at 16% on the prior quarter to reach a new quarterly record, record of $12.4 million. Here, the potential of Novartis' core ANZ payments division in particular is starting to shine through, with revenue increasing 70% on the pre, uh, previous quarter in this area. While I'm very pleased with the strong revenue growth, I acknowledge this needs to be balanced with equally strong cost reduction to move towards our overarching goal of positive operating cash flow. To this end, in Q3, we implemented a $4 million annualized cost reduction program. While our costs decreased slightly organically in Q3 to 7.1 million, the positive financial impact of this cost out program will be seen in Q4, starting from the month of April and extending into FY25. Looking forward at the macro opportunity in our target market, the business is exceptionally well positioned to benefit from both future structural and behavioural changes that will play out in the Australian market in coming years. To bring that to life, <clears throat> excuse me, some recent market research from the University of Sydney shows that nearly half of Australian businesses acknowledge they need to improve their payments process noting that there are over two and a half million businesses operating in Australia in calendar 2023. The research also found that greater than 80% of medium and large size businesses said that digital payments are a critical part of their digital transformation. And those that did invest in digital payment technologies, again, over 80% reported it made a tangible difference to their revenue and or their customer relationships. This research shows a big tailwind for Novati. 
We are B2B focused and we enable customers to operate their businesses more efficiently with our multi-sided solutions and support for all facets of digital payments. As I said, our core focus is the ANZ division. We see it as the center of the business moving forward and we are seeing the opportunity and our transformation flow through into improved performance in both business and financial metrics. The initial work around establishing the licensing, the technology and partnerships is showing that the results here are real. The top two graphs on this slide show the H1 data from the past three financial years. So H1, FY22, 23 and 24 as comparable periods. You can see strong customer growth across each of these periods and most recently, 20% customer growth in H1 FY24 versus H1 FY23. There is comparable growth in gross transaction value also across this period and most recently, 24% growth in GTV in H1 FY24 versus H1 FY23. And the bottom graph again shows quarterly revenue back to 2022 and the last calendar year that CY23 Revenue is up 75% on the prior period. And we expect to see these types of results continue as we continue with our business transformation. We are now a market-led business and are targeting specific verticals to drive higher margin revenue through an integrated payments product suite. We see the verticals of education, accommodation, real estate and health as areas of ongoing demand for a complete product set alongside continued addressable market growth in each of these verticals. We have initiated and launched both content and campaign marketing around tuition payments as the first collaborative vertical go-to-market plan from the combined payments AUNZ team. This builds, <clears throat> excuse me, this builds on several existing clients in the education and accommodation sectors. It leverages our strength in Asian wallet payments and our brand recognition with international students via, via our Navadi bill payment service. Our acquiring services, particularly around Asian wallet payments, are often the lead service offering to establish a beachhead and a good enabler of this in education will be the recent technical integration to a major university software partner for the processing of international tuition payments via their platform. <clears throat> Some other recent wins in the ANZ market that demonstrate the customer focus in our target areas include a recent contract extension with a major buy now payments later provider, We've secured a processing partnership with one of Australia's largest food delivery platforms and students are a major user of this service and the extension of our successful China payment service into the New Zealand market. <clears throat> As part of the strategy reset, we now also have a very clear view on our target customers. We're focused on serving medium-sized organisations and also the software and platform providers that serve, service those organisations as our key target customers. We generally find that medium-sized businesses at some point uh, outgrow one of the technology-based providers um, like a Stripe or a Square, or they are not getting the level of service they expect from an international payments provider, for example, a Global Payments, Fiserv or even Adyen. This mid-market group we are targeting have clear growth ambitions. They require a tailored payment solution to suit their business. They want to open up to payments from Asian consumers and wallets. And they often need support for managing business risk as they open up their payments. <clears throat> Our channel partner approach is targeting software distributors that service one or more verticals or segments with some form of software or business management platform. These customers see payments as a potential revenue generator. They desire a local or genuine partnership approach. They also need advice from a trusted and credible partner. And they're seeking a single payments provider with a broad capability. 
Our customers tell us that we are strong in each of these areas and we intend to further leverage and market to these strengths in a deliberate land and expand model in our target verticals. So what do we see as the key growth drivers in the payments ANZ business? Payments processing is a very large and growing opportunity as more and more businesses go online or open up their payment methods as, cons as consumers change their habits around payments. Our first key driver in the ANZ market is our acquiring services. And this is often a lead service from a customer acquisition perspective. Acquiring is simply an industry term, which essentially means providing solutions to companies to accept, process, and manage all forms of payments from their end customer, either in a physical store, a web-based store, or even a mobile application. <clears throat> we have the licenses, <clears throat> excuse me. We have the licenses and technologies for processing and acquiring into all the card schemes, and also account-to-account -account based payments and for direct bank transfers. Importantly, we also have an omni-channel capability, which means we can provide online, face-to-face -face, and mobile payments wrapped up into one service provider to support all modes of interaction for our customers. The second growth driver is our issuing capability. Our solutions here are driven by the ongoing displacement of cash in the economy and the changing habits of consumers and their preferred ways to pay, which are increasingly digital. We are a principal member of Visa for the issue of Visa branded prepaid and debit cards. And we have solutions in market and a growing demand for a variety of use cases around expense payments, fund disbursements, digital wallets, and a variety of stored value solutions for things like rewards, gift cards, and incentive programs. So to summarize and position the path forward, we're now deep into Nevada's transformation, both working on and delivering clear improvements quarter by quarter. We are executing the strategy to both simplify and streamline the business. We remain absolutely committed to the operating cash flow target, but now expect to achieve it later in the calendar year. But we have confidence in achieving this outcome because we're delivering the improvements in all the foundational metrics with revenue, margin and costs all moving in the required direction concurrently. We accept that more work needs to be done on the expense side. We are working on this to deepen and extend, include, including the final stages of the strategic review of several business units. We're continuing to work on incrementally improving margin with clear targets set for all teams. We continue to embed and deepen the fusion strategy within payments to promote cross-selling and integrated solution sales. And we are ahead of target on the $4 million cost reduction program we announced in Q3. And we'll see the results of that flow through into Q4. And we'll build on that in the coming quarter to take the measures, to take the measures, measures necessary to achieve that goal. So that's been a slightly longer overview and I'm starting to lose my voice. Uh, but hopefully that's been very helpful to set out how we think about the future of the business and how we are executing around the strategy. And with that, I'll hand back to you, Alfred, to moderate. Thank you, Mark, uh, for the very detailed presentation. Um, we have had quite a few questions come in already, so uh, I'm going to start running through them. If anyone does have any they'd like addressed by Mark, please type them into your Q&A box now at the bottom of the <clears> screen. Uh, Mark, I'll try and wrap a few of them together. Um, Questions from Jeff and Steve about cash flow. Uh, what is your strategy for reaching positive cash flow now? Yeah, so just to reiterate how we think about that, uh, and I just talked through that a couple of times at various points in the presentation. So, so there's no singular lever here that we're pulling around achieving that outcome. I see it as the combination of continuing to work around the combination of revenue margin and expenses. You've seen through the results in Q4 that we're continuing to grow revenue and through the execution of our strategy and the transition into a market-led customer-focused business, 
you're inc increasingly driving forward sales and extended sales at a higher margin. And in Q3, we announced a significant and meaningful expense reduction program that will start to embed through Q4 and into, Q, in, into FY25. And we will uh, deepen and extend that approach around costs as we work through both um, this quarter, this coming quarter, and into early FY25. Uh, question, couple of questions about the bank. Uh, first one from Jeff. Uh, when can we expect a further update on the funding for the bank? So we did put out a statement around that in our ASX release today. So the <clears throat> International Bank of Australia continues to work on closing out its Series A capital raise. Uh, Navati will not be participating in that raise. Um, the, um, the bank is um, at the, uh, a very sensitive point in its negotiations with several investors uh, at the pointy end of that fundraising activity. I obviously can't comment on that for, for obvious reasons. Uh, and the bank uh, is expected to kind of work through that uh, in the uh, the immediate near term to bring that to a conclusion and is currently working with and through APRA around a variety of uh, measures through their restricted licence and how that funding and that uh, impacts the, the ability of the bank to work through its restricted licence. And the bank having a separate management team and board uh, will update um, uh, in, uh, in appropriate time and I expect that to come to a conclusion through the next month. A uh, follow-up question from Lafatani. Uh, what are the chances of the bank, if it's not successful in raising its capital, um, that capital will be returned to Novartis? Yes, yeah, so there is a um, there is uh, absolutely a return of regulatory, re regulatory capital to Novartis. Novartis holds 86% of the bank. Uh, and at the point in time that the bank uh, board does make that decision, then we would see that flow um, of our equity share and that regulatory capital back into Novati. Thanks, Mark. Uh, question from Eddie. Uh, what are the expectations of China payments expanding into New Zealand? <clears throat> um, so the China payments uh, service has been <clears throat> a real success story for Novati. Um, and just to expand on, on what that service, the segments inside that service, so there's essentially two components to the China payment service. Uh, the first is a, a B2C focused bill payments facility, and the second is a B2B focused um, essentially acquiring facility and, and the pressing of payments for, for merchants. Both of those essentially drive back to um, the pressing of payments out of Asian wallets, being uh, Alipay, WeChat Pay, uh, and UPI. Um, the uh, New Zealand <clears throat> uh, business is essentially focused around the, the, the B2B service and the ability to provide merchants with uh, the ability to take payments directly out of Asian wallets. We've got um, exceptionally strong relationships with all of the Asian wallet-based providers, uh, and we have a very strong incumbent um, client uh, uh, of Novati in the accommodation sector um, that has a significant presence in New Zealand that is uh, ready and willing and able to take <clears throat> um, Asian wallets as an early pilot customer of ours. So we see that time to revenue as we work through our licensing uh, and um, uh, stand up that capability in the New Zealand market um, to be fairly quick. Thanks, Mark. Um, I'm going to start wrapping up the questions soon as we do need to finish this up uh, by about 11.30. So, Mark, I'll just run through the last three questions I've got here. Uh, it's another one from Lafatani. Uh, for the 70% growth in an for the 70 percent margin target in Australia and New Zealand, uh, is the growth being achieved at higher gross product margin? Uh, and can you unpack where the growth is coming from? Uh, so the, the short answer to that is yes. So, <clears throat> so margin across the group is quite diverse, as you'd expect from you know, a quite a disparate range of businesses, from software businesses that have margin, um, gross margin above 90% to some other parts of the business um, that are still early in gestation that are in the low 20% you know, range. From a, <clears throat> a core focus uh, of the business being Payments Australia New Zealand, uh, we have over the course of the last three quarters improved margin by um, circa 500 basis points. So it's now sitting and stable around that 45% range. And we expect to see that in, in increment gradually as we start to write new business and that starts to take a relative higher share uh, versus the margin in the back book. Obviously the back book is contracted in 
and worked its way out. But certainly in those target verticals with target customers that I've talked about during the presentation, uh, we absolutely see um, uh, in our writing business at a much higher margin than the average that's sitting there today. Thanks, Mark. Uh, question from Joseph. Uh, is there a rough timeline for the results of the strategic review? Um, so the, very, <clears throat> the strategic review remains ongoing. We've got quite a broad and diverse group. As I alluded to in the um, presentation, uh, there are various processes already underway as a result of that strategic review. Uh, we saw the divestment of the reckon stake in Q2. That was as a direct result of the uh, de a decision made as part of the strategic review. Uh, in terms of ongoing optimization of the portfolio, uh, I would, uh, expect and I'm targeting to have announcements made before the end of the financial year. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I'm just going to wrap up by combining Joseph, your second question. Uh, we, we've already touched on your question about the bank, uh, Joseph's question about acquiring and Jeff. Uh, it is, there it is. So Joseph, Joseph is asking, what does the acquiring pipeline look like? And Jeff is asking, how does Novartis compete against bigger brands such as Stripe for acquiring? Um, so the, <clears throat> the competition uh, question is a great one. So I actually don't see us competing against the businesses of the, the like of Stripe. So Stripe obviously is a, you know, a large, um, exceptionally large business um, that focuses on acquiring and acquiring related processing. Um, they processed um, in calendar 2023 um, um, gross transaction value over US $1 trillion. So, so that is not the kind of company that we are seeking to compete against. More particularly at a strat product strategy level, we are going to market with uh, a, a broad fusion-based offering. So we're not going to market selling a single product or service line, uh, as I mentioned in the, in the presentation. But just to reiterate, we are, we've, we've chosen our target verticals with care, great care. We've chosen the, our target customers with great care. Uh, and those customers are looking for uh, a, a payments provider through a single relationship that has a broad breadth of offering. They're not looking for just a single product or service line. And so <clears throat> we don't see ourselves going head to head against a, a, a business like Stripe or against a, a with a monoline product offering is simply based around acquiring or any other payments product that we have is very much around an integrated payment suite, either now or over time, where those we're fulfilling a tailored payment need for those customers. Excellent. All right, um, we are now out of time. Um, so if there are any more questions, um, please feel free to email them in uh, and Mark can respond by email. Um, a recording of this webcast will also be made available on the Novartis website in the coming days. Um, Mark, on behalf of the Novartis shareholders uh, in those and those in attendance, um, I'd like to thank you for your time today and we look forward to hearing from you again soon. Thanks, Alfred. Thanks, everybody.